What's going on guys, Kai here. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the next raid coming to Global this week, Twisted Marsh. Let's get into it. Kalia of the Twisted Marsh is a very interesting raid boss. Damage-wise, she's easier to kill than Shadow Castle, but mechanic-wise is harder than Naraka. She applies bleeds and poisons with all of her skills, and if you mess up her mechanics, it's probably a wipe. So let's take a look uh, at the... First, let's check a look at the weapon, sub-weapon, and accessories. So the weapon gives you basic attack plus two levels, cannot exceed max level, making this not a weapon that you really want to go for. Sub-weapon increases monster damage dealt in arena and battlefield. This goes to 6%. Uh, this can be good for a cleave team, uh, but most would want something like the Foggy Prison uh, sub-weapon for reduced summoner intake damage, but this is a valid option. Then we have the accessories. Decreased damage, uh, monster damage taken by 11% in arena and battlefield. As you can see, all of her sets are very focused on PvP. This can be used, but a lot of people prefer to go after other sets that focus on the summoner. Now let's look at the actual raid. In order to get bonus on this raid, you need 397,000 power. So not quite 400, but pretty close. <clears throat> this was just a random pickup group. Just some uh, people that were already in queue. And... So you're going to want, you have a couple options here. Uh, primarily, you want two damage dealers and a cleanse slash healer. The best options are Shushu and Lulu, uh, both of which do very, very well in this raid. Uh, Shushu can be used in several other places and also has uh, more uses than Lulu in this particular raid, but Lulu is a decent option until you get a bunch of Shushu going. So as we go into it, uh, she gives you a little bit of time in the beginning to stack stuff up on her. But then she has two basic attacks that she will do. One is she does this jump up and slam, which will push you back and apply two levels of bleed, two levels of poison. Then it does the circles outwards that do the same thing. Now, what you can do is with Shushu, uh, applies immunity to your team, which will ignore the knockback and will also ignore the poison and the uh, uh, poison and bleed. So you take the initial slam damage, which isn't anything, and then you ignore everything else, allowing you to ignore the mechanic. Generally speaking, you want to dodge it just to get in the habit of it. Then this move right here, uh, it does a fixed 60% of your max HP as well as uh, takes all your buffs off. So buff monsters aren't that great here because this happens pretty often. Uh, when that circle happens, you generally want to do a big heal because you're about to take 60% of your max HP and it does a percentage more per stack of bleed on you. Uh, there's also a mechanic with Snake Slater uh, that will increase damage taken from all sources from her by 10%. That includes that fixed 60%. So we take a look, those are the two skills she uses until 80%. Uh, when we'll go into the snake phase, uh, something to note, if you're able to take her from 84 to 68 before this, uh, before this animation ends, or just burst her down quick enough, you will entirely skip the snake phase, allowing you to not have to deal with this. Now, it becomes a little frogger simulation where they come out and hit you. Uh, if across your three summoners, mo your monsters don't matter. 
if the summoners get hit three, so one, 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 two, one, zero, whatever, uh, then you will get a uh, two debuffs. One is 10% damage taken, and the other is plus one mana on all of your on all your summoner skills, if that happens. But as you see, uh, I am not moving. I'm not even attempting to move. And how you can do this is the snakes go in a very predictable order and as you see the snake right here right next to me is coming very specific way so i walk right up to him and then he they just keep going right past me nothing happens and she does little twirls sending out snakes once the twirls stop i walk straight at her and ignore everything else to totally ignoring this mechanic straight at her and this is the point if you messed up then you would take that the debuff and then she goes into her phase again where she has her two skills that she will use and then we have a forbidden spell you want to stand on top of each other because uh if you're spread out then there will be uh two blasts but as you see so she she turns in she's medusa effectively she turns into the snake and then she goes to uh attack the ground with the petrified monsters you want to stack up with your players the summoners in that area because uh the more people in that area the more you spread out the damage you want to take this hit but you all want to take the hit so you take very little while she is in snake form, she takes drastically reduced damage and does not take CC. So you pelt her a little bit of damage, but don't worry too much. And then if your units were close enough, she only does one of these attacks. She did two because our units were a little bit spread out. But now uh, she will fight you a little bit. Uh, some people run away. Uh, you don't need to do that. But when she herself backs up, you let her back up and do that tail swipe and then go in. Uh, she transforms back and then you can go back into doing some damage, uh, getting some mana. And I'm showing the Corrupted Blood debuff, which is on my Ifrit right now. Uh, when she cleanses herself of all uh, debuffs she puts it on the closest unit applying the corrupted blood which is like a marker a tracker uh, even if people move around and someone else gets closer she is now going to be targeting my fire ifrit with her skills so when she does that ability where she jumps down and then does the circles it targets the corrupted blood unit now what happens here is there are three corridors one directly there one to my right and then one directly behind me there will be a flame mechanic as you see directly ahead uh, that happens and you want to get away from it this is the medusa looking at you and she does it two to three times this is random. I've tried it so many times to figure out if there was a way to figure it out. If The best way is to look at two corridors, and if you don't see something turn red, you go forward because the other one's behind you. Uh, this one she did two times. Most of the time it's two, but sometimes it's three. And she always targets the Corrupted Blood unit, which looks like it's on one of uh, my teammates' units. We're pelting it down really well. And then uh, the first pull. Uh, so these pulls on the ground, uh, whenever she does her twirl, uh, she is going to put down pulls on the ground. And the first time she puts down pulls on the ground, we're getting another snake mechanic. Uh, these don't follow the same strategy. Uh, sometimes you can find a particular spot that the snakes don't hit. But most of the time, it's going to be kind of random. There's no safe spot. Uh, but the last three waves of snakes, the pools go away. So you know you can just go after her. Every other uh, twirl, 
is just going to be those pools on the ground and that skill right there, the 60% skill. If you step on the pools, they do uh, a good chunk of damage and lower your movement speed. Uh, so you want to stay away from those pulls. Uh, only time you'll be using your dashes. As you see, I'm going in act aggressively on her because I know no snakes are going to come. Uh, and a lot of people run away because they believe another round of snakes are going to come, which forces her to jump way over onto someone else that has uh, the Corrupted Blood debuff on them, which kind of messes it up. Really, the name of the game is just like all these raids, stay with your team and keep everyone healed up. And like I said, damage-wise, it's probably the uh, second easiest raid minus Foggy Prison. But mechanic-wise, it's definitely the hardest. And then Kalia is down, we have won, and what do you get from winning? So in the shop, you have all the normal things here. Uh, the only thing different is Kalia runes. Uh, you will not have this bot. You will not have the 150 because that's six star runes. Uh, but for the five star, it'll only cost 90 uh, currency. This is primarily where all your currency is going to go for this. And the runes she is giving is Vampire and Despair. Uh, Vampire heals you based off of damage done and Despair has a 17% chance when using a skill to stun the target of the skill. Now, uh, I don't know if this is going to happen when you get the raid, but uh, what happened for us on NA is Path of Growth, Path of Adventure, they have added the Despair to Lava Cave and Vampire to Laboratory of Madness. So it's not really a big deal to get it, but what ends up being a big deal for Kalia is the material you get from her is used all the time in blacksmithing. Uh, for 6-2, a lot of gear requires her Kalia skin shard. Not just her gear, but a lot of gear does. So that's all for Kalia of the Twisted Marsh. Let me know in the comment section down below if you have any more questions and have a good time.